Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey Atala and today we're going to be talking about how you can get into medical school at Dalhousie University. Today we're joined with Natalie. Natalie has a lot of great tips on how you can get into Dalhousie University if you are an international student, if you are someone living in Ontario, or if you are actually living in Nova Scotia where Dalhousie University is. Now, if you are enjoying this series on Canadian medical schools, don't forget to subscribe and like the video down below because it does help me out a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment sections and my myself or Natalie will try to get to them as soon as possible or feel free to reach out to us on Instagram. Now if you are enjoying these videos I also make videos on study tips and tech that university students can use to actually take advantage of in classes, in lecture, in anything at all. I make tech videos basically about university. Now after this series I will be vlogging my day in the life of working as a research student at McMaster University in the anesthesiology department. So if you are interested in seeing that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. And without any further ado, let's get started with this video. Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. I'm a medical student at Dalhousie University. And today I'm making this video to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about Dalhousie Medical School, and a little bit about Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I'm now going into my second year at Dal. Before that, I did my undergraduate degree at Dal as well. I studied microbiology and immunology and psychology. So a little bit about Dal Med. We have two sites, one in Nova Scotia and one in New Brunswick. I'm mostly going to talk to you about the one in Nova Scotia because I don't know much about the one in New Brunswick and pretty much only students from New Brunswick go to the New Brunswick campus. So the Nova Scotia campus has about 100 students. There's about 20 in New Brunswick. It's a pretty tight-knit group. It's not a huge number of people, uh, which I like quite a bit. So things I like in general about Dalmed, academically, we start clinical experiences from day one. Uh, even though my first year was mostly done online, I got to interview a physician for my first day of medical school just to learn more about what they do. And although I didn't get to experience that in person on my first day, most people will, given that COVID will hopefully not be a thing for everyone's first year. And we are also a relatively small city and the hospitals are pretty small compared to big cities like Toronto. So we don't have as many medical learners as there would be there. So I find that we have a lot of opportunity to do things from day one. I did, uh, in my first year, I did family medicine uh, and anesthesia for um, clinical learning experiences. And I, in family medicine, I got to experience a lot. I was able to take histories all on my own, have conversations with the patients all on my own, even with the physician not being in the room. And then they would join us. I would fill the physician in and we'd go from there. Also small procedures. That was a lot of fun. In, in anesthesia, I got to intubate and extubate patients, do um, the pre-op uh, questionnaire, a lot of things that I was able to do that I don't think I'd have the opportunity to do if my preceptor had other more senior medical students learning with them and as well as residents. So I think it's really great that I get the opportunity to do all that as a first year student. Socially, I also love that we're a pretty small program, so about 100 people. It's a good number, but it's not too much. So you get to know everyone, you get to meet everyone and learn a little bit about them on some level. And because we're put in small groups for a lot of our educational activities, I get to kind of meet them more one-on-one -on -one in these groups, get to know their opinions about a lot of things, and that's pretty enjoyable. I really enjoy those small group tasks. So DALMED particularly uh, is two years of pre-clerkship. So those are your years where you have a layered curriculum, you have a main unit, for example, our first unit was host defense where we had immunology, microbiology, and hematology. And then layered on top of that, you have anatomy all year long. You have uh, professional competencies, which is about ethics and law and a lot of the controversial issues that come up in medicine. And that's also a longitudinal unit. Um, there, You also have your elective, so you get to choose one elective and then the other elective is going to be in family medicine. And uh, you also have clinical skills, which is where you learn your physical exams, your specific history questions, and that's what the OSCE is based on. Uh, the next two years are your clerkship. The first uh, is basically rotations, and it's 
pretty set by the university, but you do have some, some rotations are categories from which you get to choose one specific specialty, uh, but it's mostly pretty set and you get to do it in Nova Scotia. There's also an option to do a longitudinal clerkship uh, year in a rural area, which is a lot of hands-on training and a lot of people really like that idea. The locations vary from one hour away to five hours away. So people from here, especially if they come from a rural area, really like that option because sometimes they can get to go back home and work in their own communities and they really enjoy that. And then your fourth year, because that's the year you're applying to residencies and CARMS, it's pretty much elective. So you can get to focus on the things that you really want to pursue and kind of rotations around that and learn um, about the things that happen in that specific specialty, but also in specialties they work with a lot. Then you also get to travel because you might not be applying in only one place. You might be applying in various places and want to see what programs are like in other places. So you have the opportunity to do that. You also have your applications and your interviews during that year. So it's a pretty busy and expensive year if you're going to be traveling a lot. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. A little bit about the school. Campus life is, um, you know, in short supply these days because of COVID. Um, this past year, I didn't spend much time on campus, but I did do my undergrad here, so I can tell you a little bit about it. Uh, we have three main campus sites uh, in Halifax. So there's the main campus site that has all the sciences, all the arts, all of those programs. And then we have the health campus, which has medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, all the other health professions. And we also have an engineering site. So I also happened to do my undergrad mostly at the health, uh, health campus called the Carleton campus. And um, that campus is directly across the street from the children's hospital and one of the sites for the adult hospital. No one, no one really in medical school lives on campus, but Halifax is pretty small again. So you're pretty much within a 20 minute walking distance if you're living in Halifax. Uh, student culture really varies by the program you're in. So my main program is microbiology and immunology, and it was a pretty small program. Uh, about 40 or 50 people in the graduating class and pretty much everyone want, everyone wanted to go to medical school. So it was a little competitive for my taste. I'm just not a competitive person by nature. I'm very cooperative. I want everyone to work together very well. I want everyone to succeed. It's just how I am. So it's a little com uncomfortable for me to feel like people aren't really willing to help me, but they're very much willing to use me. However, medical school was completely different. Uh, I think people in my class are my kind of people. Everyone shares their notes, their practice exams that they make themselves, they arrange for study groups, and everyone really wants everyone to succeed. Whenever anyone feels like someone is struggling, people do go the extra mile to help you out. Um, even though there still is competition, I think it's much, much healthier than the competition that I experienced in undergrad. So a little bit about the application. So it's an, the interview itself is an MMI. So before it went online, it was a 10 uh, station interview with two rest stations in between. There's a prompt on the door of each station that you get to read for two minutes, and then you're in the room answering the prompt for eight minutes. There's some follow-up questions. If you don't fill up the eight minutes, it's all good. Another thing about the school is tuition. It's 24,000, give or take, a year. But all things considered, for medicine, you do have a lot of opportunity to get grants. You get a lot of opportunity to get funding from the government as well, the government loans. So it's really not too bad. And the line of credit is pretty good for medical students and the interest rates aren't too bad. So how do you apply? You log into a portal that you're given a password for by DAO. So it's a it's kind of a portal that they've made for themselves and it's not really that complicated. It's just a little tedious. It's not my favorite process, but it's not too bad at all. So a little bit about Halifax and Nova Scotia. I've been living here for about seven years and I absolutely love it. I, I think it's the perfect size city for me. Uh, some don't really believe that this is a city, but I do. <laughs> and um, so the downtown area is pretty small, but it's packed with places you can go, restaurants, bars, 
um, a lot of patios, especially in the summer and in the fall, some of them are heated. It's really great for social life, I think, and there's a lot of places to explore. New places are popping up all the time. And uh, we also have a beautiful waterfront. It's packed with restaurants and patios and beer gardens and cafes and ice cream shacks. And it's uh, lovely in the summer, and I really enjoy that as well. So in terms of academics, um, at least my academics, I debated how much I wanted to share about this, but I thought it couldn't hurt really. So my GPA was 3.7, which wasn't stellar. And I really debated whether or not I should tell you about that because it's a little embarrassing for me. But uh, I thought it would encourage you to see that uh, it's not everything by any means. and all hope is not lost if your GPA isn't spectacular. You don't need to be a 4.0 student to be a good doctor. Uh, so I hope that if you feel that way, that you either find a way to make that better or find other ways to strengthen your application. My MCAT score is 511, and that's pretty average as well for Dow. Um, and um, in terms of research before applying, I did a lot of research starting in my second year of undergrad until two years after graduating. So about five years of research in total, but I did re do research in a lot of different areas. And my goal was to kind of acquire um, knowledge about different types of research and how to kind of do a lot of different things rather than focus in on one area and publish in it. So as a result, I did not publish at the time. Right now I have uh, two manuscripts in preparation, but I'm in medical school now. It's a different story. It's not really helpful in my application. Um, in terms of extracurriculars, I volunteered with a lot of different groups. Mostly I focused on arts. I lit, volunteered with the church choir. I really enjoyed volunteering with an art therapy group that volunteered at a nursing home. It was some of the most wholesome moments I've ever encountered. Um, I also volunteered with St. John Ambulance and um, as an advanced first uh, aider or first medical first responder. Uh, we covered community events and made sure everyone was safe. I also worked for a couple of years um, after I graduated. I also worked during my undergrad, but it was kind of like part-time jobs that didn't really make a difference in my application, I don't think anyway. And then in my two years between my undergrad graduation and getting into med school, I did administrative work for a residency program, which where I learned a lot of things about medicine. I really appreciate uh, getting that job and the person who got me that job. And I'm very, I very much recommend working in such a field. I know administration can seem boring, but it's also a place where you get to soak up a lot of information about processes that happen behind the scenes. And that's really informative. I also worked in research during that time. Um, and that was also a lot of fun. As I mentioned, I love research. So um, tips in general for getting into medical school. So the majority of your weight in the application is at Dal anyway, is at least um, is on your essay and on uh, your interview. And there's also a requirement that you pass the Casper. So if you don't make the Casper or make those academic cutoffs, you're automatically rejected. However, for Dal, the cutoffs are not that bad, really. I think they're pretty generous. And I don't think that'll be the reason that you don't make it for most people. So working on your application, it's really, I found it really difficult to write a good essay because a lot of the times we don't really see the things that make us unique. They're just the, you know, there are just things about us that we don't really see as our fortes or anything. They're just things. Um, I found it really helpful to um, reach out to people that do see me as someone who'd make a good physician or have uh, interacted with me in that kind of capacity, in a professional capacity. Just have a chat with them and kind of see what they think I've done in my life that would make me a good candidate. Um, and that kind of got the creative juices flowing. I kind of got 
um, a sense of how other people see me and that was very helpful. And then I cannot, I cannot emphasize enough how genuine you need to be, especially in the interview, because people might um, prepare a lot and I, I recommend that you do prepare, but people will see through it when you're just kind of over dramatizing something or making, you know, something that's relatively small seem like a huge thing. That's not really what they're looking for. They're not looking for some superhero. They're not looking for big dramatic events necessarily because most people don't have these big dramatic life-changing moments that make them want to be a doctor or make them a person who's suitable to be a good doctor. So it's kind of, more of a priority that you're genuine and you're really uh, able to see other people's perspectives, empathize with people, and then weigh that with the things that you know, facts, thing, knowledge, evidence, and take a stance on that and be really good at communicating that in a way that's productive, that where you and the other person might be able to come to conclusions together. And that's really how medicine happens that's that's really what happens when you're taking care of patients and of the people that i know that have done the interviews they do so many interviews in the same day and it's not really what the student says as much as it's how they say it because most people have the relatively similar answers for this the same question um but it's really how you say it that's going to make a lot of difference and um if they can see that you genuinely care and of course people do slip through the cracks and um all that but they will see it if you are genuine so i highly recommend that other tips i really hope you choose to do things that you really enjoy in your undergrad i think that's when people shine that's when people are performing at their best and that's really helpful when you're applying and that's when you come across things that you are passionate about and you can really show how far you go when you are passionate about something. I think grades are only one part of that, um, school and academics. There's also, I cannot recommend enough volunteering and community initiatives that you're passionate about and care about. Um, because you get to meet a lot of people and I think that's how you shape the kind of physician you're going to be. The more people you meet, the more um, you're able to see the similarities in people, but also the differences in people that make them unique. And that's the way you build that ability um, to interact with people from all walks of life and be able to help people from all walks of life. Um, and I think that's that's priceless and I think that will come through in your interview and in your applications as well. So that's pretty much all I've got to share today. If you have any questions about Dalhousie Medical School or if you have any questions about medicine in general, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my friend's channel. I hope you get a lot of useful tips about medicine and medical schools from here and good luck with your applications.